Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. It's Dimitri and it's MG Owners Australia. Today we are going for a drive in my new LDV D90 known as Maxus D90 or MG Gloucester in different parts of the world. So what is this about? Well, not everyone has driven such a big car before. Maybe you are curious, also planning to upsize like I did from my previous vehicle and you just would like to know what it's like in just general BAU kind of operation if the drive videos are of any interest. Drive in this car, drive is in MG ZST that I can do for you and comment on this kind of stuff. Is this of interest? Is this insightful in any way, shape or form? Please like the video if you are not much of a talker. If you don't want to leave a comment, that's fine. But even liking the video tells me that I'm doing something right. So please, takes a second of your time. It takes a lot longer for me to put these videos together. So my friends, I left the audio on there for a little bit just so that you could hear uh, as much as the microphone of the camera allowed us to hear the sound of the engine inside of the car when we take off. So you do hear a little bit of a kind of wind up there, but nothing too offensive, nothing that would be disturbing me too much, would be too loud, would be too soft or suggest lack of power. It's fine. The weather is bad as you can see, cars are merging, the camera is not pointed perfectly front, uh, it's not a dash cam, it's just my phone there and I have reduced the sound, the noise, otherwise the shakiness unfortunately of the contraption would allow for the kind of ambient noise too much. So let me know in the comments down below if this format worked for you still, if it gives you enough of a volume and kind of effect of this drive as if you're sitting to the side of me there when I'm driving you around. Now I decided to kind of address something that's an elephant in the room. When you buy a massive blimp of a car like this, your probably main train of thought and concern goes towards shopping malls and shopping centers. How would the car behave in the car parks, especially in the tight turns, tight car parks of shopping centers or very tight traffic? So that's why I'm first of all picking a pretty bad weather day where the traffic is crazy. You can see these guys merging in front of us like left and right without indicating. Uh, we just give them space. You can see that elevated driver position allows me to look a little bit ahead and I really, really enjoy that in the higher kind of uh, position, sitting position in the car. That is just a practical example for you and you can only imagine that I can see even better further ahead because the camera is pointing a little bit 45 degrees towards the right, but I look straight ahead. So it kind of gives me quite a nice vantage point there. Now, the only thing that will make you freak out are those kind of I don't even know what to call them, but they are those bars that are hanging at the entrances to the car parks, usually that indicate the low ceiling. It kind of indicates to you that, hey, it's only 2.1 meter clearance. So 2.1 meter clearance, 2.2 meter clearance, we're about to drive through another one of those and it will be right above us. Um, it does make you freak out at first because you sit really high up, but it's fine. There is no problem. Yeah, we just went under under one of those. Yeah, couldn't see it particularly well. Now you can see we're driving into the car park and as long as you are not treating the car as a sports car, as long as you take your time, you take your turns, you kind of um, wait a little bit, you give it a little bit of time, it's completely fine. Steering is very, very nice and soft. I have to comment on that. And this is a particularly sharp turn coming up here. And I will also stop talking for a second. And you can probably, you probably heard there a bit of a bleeping, a little bit of bleeping. That is the sensors bleeping that indicate that I'm too close to the obstacles. It's kind of helpful. I would almost say it's a little less intrusive and a little less loud than it was in MGHS that was trying to be too over the top as far as those warnings are concerned. Here, I think it's toned down. So we sort of, this, this short segment was there just to illustrate to you how the car behaves in fairly tight car parks, turns especially going under low ceilings and that kind of stuff, which again is fine. I like sitting higher, I can see much further up, I do apologize here for the camera shaking particularly, at least you don't have to deal with the rattly noise of the camera and I am just voicing over this. 
And again, I can see ahead here who is merging, who is crossing, pedestrian crossings. I do like it. I do like it. I don't think it's anything bad. And again, as I started saying there, in, in that kind of fast-paced environment of the car park turns, um, regardless of the car being so big, it actually turns a lot better than you think. It turns a lot better than you think. It's a lot more resp responsive on the steering. It's a fairly strong, I imagine, hydraulic steering, powered steering or electrical steering, probably electrical rather than hydraulic. Um, and yeah, that, that's definitely a call out. That's something, look, as far as the how the car drives, there are only a few things that matter. Braking is fairly responsive. Power, it's power there, it's fine. I'm not on a highway often enough and it's not a racing car. What's important here is that this car allows me to feel okay in the city. That's the most important thing. Tight traffic, uh, sharp turns in the in the car parks of all sorts and shapes and sizes now here it's a bit of a drizzly rain as you can see and the rain is not much there so there are just a few kind of drops uh, here and there and i don't know if this particular segment that i edited in here will show you properly but to be honest with you the rain detector just as bad as rain detector was in mghs here i would almost say it's worse because there is a bit of rain, you can see it right now coming in, and the automatic setting does not detect it. It does not detect it and doesn't do the little swipe. All, all that's required is a little swipe. That's why you might have been wondering, why do I do it manually? Periodically I turn it with my left hand there, I, I turn it into, hey, do your wiping business. And it blinks every time, because when I do it manually, it turns off the automatic, uh, the automatic thing. Um, beyond that... I think the drive in this car is very enjoyable. The camera is certainly suggesting all this shakiness, but when you are inside of the vehicle, there is none of that. It is not a soft suspension. I will call out one final thing here. It's not a soft suspension. It is fairly hard suspension. You kind of feel the bumps a little bit, but it's certainly nothing like it might come across right now to you in, on the on the camera screen. It's just the, my contraption and just how camera is sitting there in the in the vehicle. That that's all that's all it is there. Beyond that, I do enjoy driving in this car. Again, not to repeat myself many times, but it just has to be called out. You sit high, you're fairly big. It is a big of a blimp. The other vehicles are sort of don't have a choice but to see you. They don't have a choice but to notice you on the road and rather than try and sneak in in front of you, therefore creating a bit of a tense and unsafe kind of environment because for some stupid reason, there, these are still cars. We don't want to be hit by a small car, by a big car, whatever, it doesn't matter. But for better or for worse, it is just a fact of life that when your car is bigger, you're more visible and you're more prominent to other cars and they are just not taking their chances. And this is it for today, my friends. We have been for a drive. You have seen the car in action. I genuinely, like I said, enjoy, enjoy it. I really enjoy it. I don't mind the big size. I don't mind any other kind of shortcomings of it so far. There are lots of things to discuss about the elements of the car rather than the drive itself. And we will be talking about those elements, such as the particulars of how Android Auto connectivity works, for example, with infotainment system and other kind of things. Um, so please subscribe for those kind of videos if you haven't already. Your support means a lot. And for today, I'm going to say again, thank you for tuning in and bye for now.